forgotten that figures show it's going to cost a small fortune to keep some of our metropolitan beaches topped up with sand. The blowout is revealed in the sand management bill for the new Glenelg and West Beach boat harbours. Work's supposed to start on the $10 million boat launching ramp at West Beach in the next few weeks. It's been designed so sand building up on the southern breakwater can be trucked to northern beaches. Coastal experts have told a parliamentary committee the amount of sand needed to be shifted could be three times higher than first thought, and the annual cost close to $700,000. That's something we'll have to pay every year, forever, and increasing every year. The boat owners won't be able to afford it, so the taxpayers will have to pay. A public rally is planned for here next Sunday morning because local residents and lifesavers believe beaches north of here will be lost to erosion if the sand management plan goes wrong. If the sand management program isn't kept up, i.e. the funding isn't made, then the beach, the sand won't move up the beach so that, that, sand will, uh, that beach will come totally degraded. It's been suggested the West Beach plan should be scrapped and a boat launching ramp included in the Glenelg Marina. Just moving sand past the Padawalunga entrance has been costed at between $200,000 and $800,000 a year. Chris Warren, Seven Nightly News. Beachgoers between Glenelg and Henley are in for a few surprises this summer. That part of the coast is becoming a major construction site and sunbakers, swimmers and boaties all face disruption. Excavators, steel pipes and welders have moved on to West Beach. It's the start of a $10 million government funded boat launching facility which has already upset some local residents. They claim another rock wall marina will cut off the natural drift of sand north and they come up with a compromise plan. Instead of building a boat launching ramp on the beach at West Beach, it's been suggested that small boats should be able to launch here at the northern end of the Padawalunga Lake. Boats would pass under King Street Bridge and through the lock gates into the sea. We would not be putting another obstruction across the beach and we would be saving uh, anything up to $700,000 a year in sand management costs, which of course would increase every year. Twelve of South Australia's most prominent marine scientists have jointly signed a letter expressing concern that some of our most popular beaches will suffer serious erosion if a rock wall boat harbour is built at West Beach. Many of the scientists are employed by the government's Marine Research Institute, SADI, but SADI's chief scientist has refused to allow them to talk to the media. They're under instructions not to be here. The government doesn't want to hear from the experts. Anna Shepherd, wife of marine scientist Dr Scoresby Shepherd, confirmed her husband wanted to address today's protest rally. They should have been able to speak as individuals, certainly, as scientists, as professional people. So has there been political pressure to keep the scientists quiet? I'd rather not be specific in saying who he's under pressure from, but you can perhaps draw your conclusions. Coast dwellers who don't want a boat harbour at West Beach put their case to Charles Sturt Council last night. Their concerns about the impact of a boat harbour on their beaches were unanimously accepted by Council. And Mayor John Dyer has strong advice for Premier Olsen. Talk to us. I believe there's a need for him to really get down to serious discussion, look at other serious proposals that can be put in place, possibly save the government some $8 million and all the headaches. Some claim it's a proposal that is deeply flawed. Others, including the Premier, fear we're becoming a state of knockers. An independent report backs the claims of angry beachside residents. Save our beaches! New South Wales engineer Doug Lord concludes that the West Beach Boat Harbour will interrupt the natural movement of sand, damaging beaches to the north and lumping taxpayers with a never-ending bill replacing up to 60,000 cubic metres of sand each year. But across town, Premier Olsen wasn't listening. Instead preferring the sounds of progress at the opening of the Caridis Corporation's newest inner city apartment complex. The Premier is a staunch supporter of the boat harbour. It's part of the $85 million Holdfast Bay redevelopment. Now I'm certainly not prepared to delay the project. Developers who said yesterday they were close to pulling out of the $85 million project. Western suburbs residents confronted their Liberal MP Steve Condes today demanding to know why he did not vote against the proposed West Beach Harbour. You crossing the floor would have given us more chance of getting a compromise. No, they wouldn't have done that at all no. because the government would have wiped me clean for ever and a day and I'd have got nothing. 
Across town, the consortium members were meeting to assess the state of play, happy that a Labor proposal to delay the West Beach project for three months had been defeated in the lower house. But none of the players were sure what would happen next. The Premier was calling for Labor to back down over its opposition to the West Beach Harbour. There are no further objections. Just get out of the way, give support to the project for South Australia's sake. In Parliament, Labor leader Mike Rand was late for question time. He was off trying to find a compromise. Over the West Beach Boat Harbour, on which the whole project depended. Mr Olsen says it's a great day for South Australia. Others aren't convinced. Chris Warren is at West Beach. Chris, how did the agreement happen? Graham, the Labor opposition doesn't want to appear to be anti-development. Premier Olsen and opposition leader Mike Rand met last night and came up with a compromise deal which falls a long way short of what conservationists and the local residents were hoping for. With a background of bulldozers, Premier Olsen, along with Holfar Shores developer Bob Borman, were in a celebratory mood. For the politicians, the real issue is jobs, not the environment. All I want to do now is get on for South Australia's sake with this project, create jobs in the construction area. Negotiations last night, from our point of view, were about securing the project so it could go ahead and create jobs. The compromise deal means West Beach Boat Harbour will be redesigned with smaller breakwater walls. The sand management plan will be made public and there'll be an independent environmental assessment to be completed in two weeks. Charles Sturt Council will be indemnified against any damage to its beaches. We want to keep our beaches as they are, and no, no more, no less. Hey. But first, in an extraordinary move, Henley and Grange residents have vowed to undertake a campaign of civil disobedience to block the controversial West Beach Boat Harbour. The decision was taken at an angry meeting of more than 300 beachside residents this morning. It's the first rumbling of civil unrest, fueled by frustration and anger. Once they grow in, then they go up. And disappointment that the campaign to stop the West Beach Boat Harbour had failed. More than 300 filled the Henley Town Hall. They heard experts tell them the boat harbour would inevitably erode their beach. They expressed disgust at the December 11 political deal between the Liberal and Labor parties that allows the boat harbour to proceed, and they were warned there's now little they can do. You're the community, and if you want to keep out there fighting, go out and fight, and sometimes we do have miracles happen. And despite all that, these beach dwellers have vowed to fight. When these people stood, they were committing themselves to a campaign of civil disobedience, echoing Tasmania's famous Franklin River Dam case. They'll form a 24-hour-a-day picket line aimed at physically blocking construction of the West Beach Boat Harbour. Besides donating their time and money, they're prepared to be arrested in defence of their beach. $1 million dollar development. And in a further complication for the Olsen government, the man who established the government's foreshore protection plan has damned the controversial development. The protests started quietly on the site of the proposed boat harbour, quiet starts being the hallmark of what has been a low-key but extremely organised campaign of dissent. By midday, more than 500 people were gathered in 38 degree heat. They hardly fit the conventional image of the Green protester, but they were protesters nonetheless. They came with merchandise. New t-shirts. With no condition should any other man-made structures be built. Poignant souvenir glasses and places to sign up to sit in. By the end of the day, another 300 people had pledged to confront the bulldozers from tomorrow morning. Even the local churches came to the flock. The clergy leading a sun-safe congregation in prayers for courage and the beach. Good evening. Police have used special new powers to break up a protest over the controversial boat harbour at West Beach. Large contingent of officers forced demonstrators to move out, allowing construction crews to take over the site. Rick Teague joins us now from West Beach. Rick, were the protesters taken by surprise? George, I don't believe so. Uh, they've been waiting for this to happen for some time now. The government has continuously been frustrated by the presence of the protesters down here. So much so, they decided to enact special legislation to completely shut down the construction site to everyone except construction workers. The police were informed of this and they were instructed to move in this morning. Yeah. 
Up to 50 uniformed police, some on horseback, were prepared for action when they arrived at the Baku Road site. About a dozen members of the local residents group stood firm as they were told to leave the area. But you've now been in the direction to leave the premises. If you don't leave, we'll have to escort you from there. The police were enforcing a special act gazetted by the state government only this morning, which places the construction site off limits. And what they've done is they've come in with some very heavy legislation, uh, basically designed to stop us from protesting and to steamroll through what they want to do, which is wreck West Beach. As a group, they refused to budge, but one by one they were peacefully removed. Despite the threats, no one was arrested. Even before the demonstrators had a chance to pack up their makeshift camp, fencing contractors were busy sealing off access to the proposed construction site along Military Road. The group has been fighting the boat harbour since it was announced as part of the $185 million Holdfast Shores development. They say the changes will destroy beaches to the north. Who'd be surprised about what this government would do in order to get some uh, um, real estate development through? But first, after angry scenes this morning, West Beach Boat Harbour protesters are promising more of the same in the future. The police cleared a picket line so trucks could move in. Protesters claim opposition is growing to the Boat Harbour plan. The first trucks were turned away from the harbour construction site at 6.30 this morning. About 60 protesters blockaded the military road entrance and the stalemate dragged on for four hours. By mid-morning, police had the numbers to break up the picket line. Those who need to be moved will be moved. Anyone who refused to move was lifted out of the way. There were no arrests and a cordon of police surrounded each truck as it passed through the gates. Shame, Holson, shame! Shame, Holson, shame! A secret government report claims the boat harbour will cause sand and seaweed management problems. There has been no assessment on the impacts of the breakwaters or the uh, longshore drift. We're talking about a beach that will disappear and that's for everybody. We can develop alternatives down at Glenelg and we're asking the Premier, as we have been for the last six months, to meet with us and the key stakeholders and work out a compromise that this community can live with. They wore bandanas for their silent protest to emphasise their belief that they've been gagged. And the look was fitting for an early morning attack on what has become a battle of Wild West proportions. But the silence was broken when police issued a warning. I don't want a great big pile of rocks. Oh, it's the rest of the community. We don't want a big pile of rocks. Even though the project to build the boat harbour out from West Beach has the blessing of government, the Save Our Beach campaign boasts 500 members who can be mobilised at a moment's notice. Today they decided on nuisance action, piling rocks in front of the gate used by heavy machinery to build the sea walls. We want them to stop this uh, madness. We also want the uh, uh, dismantling of this particular uh, section of the uh, groin because uh, we believe if we dismantle it now, we'll save the government $12 million. Even regular air traffic in this area can't avoid the protesters' message. And while today's silent protest seems unlikely to stop the tide of development, these people are determined to do everything they can to prevent this marina from going ahead. Our people are being prepared to be arrested. The Save Our Beach campaign is now demanding a meeting with the Premier. Some were dragged away by police, while others braved chilly water to avoid being forcibly removed. Once again, the early morning work crews were confronted by a human barrier and once more the job of resolving the impasse fell to police. Under the common law, I'm asking you to leave the road or my people have to move in and move you out of the way. We will use reasonable force. But protesters took no notice, standing firm as trucks and police officers moved in. Hey, you, get up to that beach! Four protesters, described by police as ringleaders, were led into a paddy wagon, driven to Glenelg Police Station and released without being charged. The protesters have been fighting the harbour since it was announced as part of the multi-million dollar Holdfast Shores development. They say the project will destroy beaches to the north.
Unperturbed by this morning's incident, the campaigners returned to the harbour this afternoon, stopping trucks from offloading rocks on the breakwater. One by one, police removed them, but some jumped into the water. Cold. <laughs> Cold to begin with, but you know, you get used to it when your body temperature drops. <laughs> but no, it's... we've managed to delay it further, so it was worth it. I think it's, it's well known how unhappy our community is about what's going on down here and how much this is against the public interest. The protesters later left the water after being threatened with arrest. They've promised more protests later in the week. Mark Adenall, 10 News. Sees he was met by protesters angry over the West Beach Harbour development. I would have thought they'd had better things to do at 5am in the morning than turn up to the airport, but suffice to say, the West Beach boat launching facility will be installed. Beach. 50 police were needed to remove demonstrators trying to stop trucks from entering the Boat Harbour construction site. Trucks loaded with massive boulders for the Boat Harbour groin found the gates blocked by protesters again this morning. After weeks of passive demonstrations, the protesters were not in the mood to go quietly. We shall not be I'm now requesting you to remove yourselves from this immediate area. We have a right to protest. Two of the campaign organisers were locked up in a paddy wagon to cool off. The 40 other protesters were warned they'd be arrested if they went back. They did go back, there were no arrests, and 50 police, many of them called in at short notice, formed a human wall to let the trucks through. After two hours of skirmishing, the protesters regrouped to discuss tactics. Despite what, what may happen, we have to be non-violent. Politicians are not responding to us. As a community, as people from the community, there is nothing we can do to stop something that we think is fundamentally flawed. The beach has been fenced off to stop protesters getting too close to where construction of the Rock Groin Harbour Wall is well underway. Government Enterprises Minister Dr Michael Armitage says work on the harbour complex is ahead of schedule. Chris Warren, 7 Nightly News. Demonstrators made a construction of their own aimed at causing delays for workers. For the first time in their four months of action, anti-harbour campaigners trespassed. Two dozen people jumped fences and moved onto the new groin. Workers waited for police to arrive as a barricade grew in front of machinery. Our purpose today was to hold up work and we did that effectively for two and a half hours. Police made no arrests and the protesters left peacefully, repeating their call for a meeting with the Premier. Earlier, four people were detained during another round at the front gates. Police removed demonstrators from the construction site entrance, allowing work to proceed. But the protesters have vowed to battle on. A lot of people have grown up with this beach from when they were young and remember the beach at North Canal before the sand hills went. And it's to do with how strong our spirit is, I think, not our bodies.